I brought home a typographical trimming saw from an auction at our old woodworking tool group meetup this past summer. Thompson, but there's no first name. <laughs> I like the idea of having a very small, accurate table saw for doing small parts. I began by cleaning it up. I showed this saw and used it a little bit on the coaster video that I did a few months ago. I squirted out the sawdust, which there always seems to be when I bring home one of these old tools. Bed goes up. The blade is run off a motor that's driven by a belt. Bed goes down. The table lifts up and down. The blade doesn't tilt and it doesn't raise and lower. It's just set at one height at 90 degrees. It seems like you could raise and lower the table to get different depths for the saw blade, but there doesn't seem to really be a way to hold it in place. So I don't think that's supposed to be the function. I brought the saw into the shop and it has a fence that allows you to cut to different lengths. And I believe it's measuring the cuts in pikas as this is a publishing saw. I tested it and it seemed to work. And I figured out very quickly that it's really nice for making squares because you can cut off a piece and then rotate it 90 degrees and cut the other side and you have a square. The first thing I thought of was to get a new blade for the saw. The goes up. So I took the old blade off and it takes a saw blade with a 7 8 of an inch arbor and about a six inch diameter saw blade. I found something that looked like it would work and I ordered that and waited and put it in the saw. It goes down. And the first cut was horrible. It was chattery and it didn't leave a very good cut. In looking at the saw closely, I found an extra carbide tooth and I pulled that off and of course the tooth that it was next to was in the wrong place. So it still didn't cut very well. And I was a little bit disappointed in the saw blade. So I put the original saw blade back on again, as that seems to cut a lot better. I got a mobile base for the saw. I thought about it and it seemed like I should make a mobile base instead of just buying one. But I decided I'd spend the time making things that are more unique and I can't just go get something off the shelf. So with this mobile base, you basically get the hardware for the corners and you make a piece of plywood that the piece of machinery sits on. So you have to size that piece of plywood to the size of the base that you need. This was the piece of plywood I used to hold the Lego gear coffee table in place on the CNC. So it has some bumps on it that I had to take off. Once I had the piece to the right size, I rounded down the corners so they would fit in the hardware a little better. Then I need some holes through the plywood to clamp the hardware in place. and I can put each corner on, and it's just three bolts sort of sandwiching the plywood and holding the wheels in place. I realized I had the wheels on upside down, so I had to flip the little arm that holds the wheels over, and then it seemed to work a lot better. <laughs> now to try and get the saw onto the base, the saw wasn't quite heavy enough to get my crane out, but it also wasn't light enough that I could just pick it up either. So I tipped the saw back, then slid the base underneath and sort of rocked the saw into place. It was a little clumsy, but it worked. And the base seems to work. It's mostly that I'm not exactly sure where this is gonna go yet, so it's nice to have it movable. <laughs> There's a blade guard, at least I think that's what it is, that I found in a box of tidbits that came with the saw. 
it was broken into two pieces. The first thing I'm going to try is epoxying the two pieces back together again. If this doesn't work, I think my next idea would be to make an aluminum plate to go between the two pieces and sort of patch them together. And if that doesn't really work, then I guess the, the last attempt would be to remake this guard out of wood or design some new kind of guard for the blade. It was a little bit tricky clamping the two pieces together, but I came up with something that worked with two clamps and a shim. <laughs> So I let that set up overnight and it seems to be holding together. I'm going to be kind of delicate with it and if it comes apart then I'll work on one of my other solutions. I put it on the saw and it wasn't quite closing right and I figured out that my epoxy was sort of in the way and I needed to cut that down a little bit. So I got out my little Fairchild grinder and carved off the epoxy. Then the guard seemed to fall into place. I think this is how this goes on here. <laughs> I'm kind of just putting it together the way parts seem to fit together. It, it kind of makes sense as a blade guard. Um, I hope this works. I'm, I'm a little dubious of this joint as it's sort of a, a point connection. Um, but so far, it's, it's holding together. I, I tend to be very gentle with it. <laughs> so this has this little sawdust drawer where the sawdust goes. And, and take, taking sort of a cue from that, I thought it'd be nice to make some little drawers that fit in these cubbies. I use the pine that I've been trying to use up on recent projects. I started by jointing. Then I figured I could cut the pieces down to fairly close to the size they needed to be. And then the jointing wouldn't be trying to flatten so much of the warping in the wood. And I jointed all the pieces. I wasn't trying to get the thickest pieces possible here. The bottom drawer is going to be taller than the width of these pieces of pine that I have. So I spliced together a set to make that bottom drawer. I can mark the length that I need by putting the drawer side into the opening and make sure they're all similar. Then I can cut the drawer sides based on that length. As I got the drawer sides done, I could put them in place to make sure I had the right number and that they fit. These are the slightly taller drawers. I cut those to the right width to make the right height. And I have all the drawer slides. So now I want to make the front and backs and to make the joint at the corners of the drawers. I wanted to use my Oliver table saw as one of the dado sets, but I don't have a miter gauge for that saw. So I made a quick wooden miter gauge so I could push the pieces through the blade. This saw has a very wide miter slot. So I'm gonna put a quarter inch piece of plywood in the miter slot and then a wide piece of pine sort of as the fence on the miter gauge. And it seemed to work. And it was square on the first try, which was amazing. It doesn't have to be perfectly square, just as long as it's pretty close. Tested it, it seems to work. And this is how the joint's gonna work. It's a fairly simple, widely used drawer joint. <laughs> so on the front and back pieces of the drawers, I can cut a rabbit into the end of the piece and I can cut all of my fronts and backs. Then on the drawer slides, I can cut a dado into the end and the tab from the back and the front will fit into that dado and it makes a very strong drawer corner joint. The next thing to do was to mark the bottom on the inside 
then I can cut a dado for the drawer bottom. I decided it would be good to do the handles before I put the drawers together. I think in the end it wasn't really that critical, but it got the handles done. So I found a scrap piece of walnut that I cut into a close to square section. Then I thought it would be good to use the trimming saw for at least one part of this project. <laughs> so I cut the handles to length with the typographical trimming saw. I could cut a slightly longer piece off the end and turn it around and then set the fence slightly closer and clean up the other side of the handle. And I could do this really quickly. And I can figure out where the handles are gonna go. Just wanted them centered and slightly above the center line. Can drill some holes. My idea was just to hold the handles in place with two screws from the inside of the drawer. And that looks good. I did the handles on the shorter drawers. Then I could cut the drawer bottoms and I'm just gonna use quarter inch birch plywood. I have a leftover piece that I can use. I can put the drawers together. I just put some glue in the joints and held the drawers together with brad nails. And the nails will just work as clamps while the glue sets up. And the drawers can go in place. I was amazed that they fit. <laughs> Usually when I do this kind of thing, one of the drawers just won't fit. There'll be something in the back of the saw that keeps the drawer from going in. But this time everything worked. I didn't put the handles on the big drawer on the bottom as I wanted to figure out where they would go based on the drawer handles above. So I'll put two handles on this big drawer and they'll follow the pattern from the handles above them. And I can put the big drawer in and that works. And the drawer is going in. So there, there's this random hole in the side of the cabinet and I found while I was sort of digging through the box of stuff is a nameplate that must go over that hole. So I cleaned it up so it's much shinier now and I'm gonna put this on and I found some little tiny machine screws that I think will work. They're tad on the long side, but. They should work. There's another hole on the other side, and I'm not sure what to do about that because I only found one of these. <laughs> so I, I may have to make uh, something like this, maybe out of wood that goes on the other side. I started to put the piece on and I realized I'd never taken this back cover off. And when I did that, I found a bunch more sawdust that needed to be cleaned up. The two screws on the top of this panel don't screw into anything. They just rotate a tab that holds to the side of the saw. So it's sort of held in the intention. So I cleaned up that sawdust as best as I could. And while I had access to the motor, I added some oil to the oil cups. And I decided to do that to the arbor for the blade as well. Seems to run nicely. In the cabinet of the saw, there are three holes that match up perfectly with the holes on this name plate. I'm really guessing this is where this goes. Now there is a hole on the other side of the saw, and I'm thinking now maybe what I'll make is a little vent plate to go over that to let at least a tiny amount of circulation of the air around the motor. These screws didn't thread into the cabinet, so I actually have to have nuts on the back side of the screws. So they're more like little miniature bolts. And then the back went back on. So 
So the, the saw is put together enough to where I can use it now. It should, should work well. I've got the drawers in and I've started putting a few things into the, into the drawers. I'm, I'm thinking it'll probably, be, it'll probably be more than stuff that goes with this saw. But if I can find enough that goes with the saw, then that's what will go in the drawers. I'm not entirely sure where I'm going to put this. I think I can find a space. I do want to rearrange the main table saws a little bit and maybe even move the jointer over near the planer. And I might, in doing all that, that might free up a spot for this saw, which would be nice. Thanks for watching.